Okay, number one, we want to complete the proportion correctly given the similar polygons. So the proportion that's set up is set up based off of the similarity statement. They set CH, first two letters, over YW, first two letters, and we just need to figure out which two letters match with YS, or which two sides, or which side corresponds to YS. Well, YS is the first and last letter of our similarity statement, so it corresponds to CF. Okay, number three. Which of the similarity statements is correct for each set of similar triangles? Well, let's first mark vertical angles so we can see which corresponding angles go with each other. When we're doing this, we want to check to see, I'm just going to start with angle B. Notice angle B has one arc. So we want to check to see where angle B is in the same place as angle F. So here B is the first letter, G is the first letter. Well, it's supposed to be F, so it's not that one. B is the first letter, G is the first letter again, so it's not that one. B is the last letter, it goes with C, which is the last letter. Well, we want it to go with F, so we know it's not that one, so this is easy. B is the middle letter, and there's our F. Let's check the other ones just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. D has the right angle next to it, so it should go with G. D, first letter, G, first letter. We're good. Finally, C, those are your vertical angles. They're congruent. C is last, C is last. Okay, number five. They tell us that each pair of the polygons is similar. We want to find the value of X. Well, as soon as you see the word similar and you're looking for a missing variable, you automatically want to set up a proportion. That's going to be two ratios equal to each other. You're going to want to be very careful when you set up this proportion because you have to look at the placement of the sides. If you look at x plus 5, it's in between the two arcs, angle A, and the one arc, angle C. So x plus 5, whatever goes on our denominator, has to be in between the one arc and the two arcs. So it's going to match up with one arc, two arc, side 15. And then sticking to this polygon first in the numerator, because we used it first in the numerator here, we want to use side CD or 4, and that's going to go with 5. Cross multiply, and remember when you have more than one term in an expression, we want to put it in parentheses. That's going to prompt us to remember to distribute. So we do 5 times x plus 5, the entire quantity, and set that equal to 15 times 4. 5 times x is 5x plus 5 times 5, which is 25. That equals 15 times 4, which is 60. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides of my equation. So I get 5x equals 35. Divide both sides by 5. So I get x is 7. Okay, number 9, we want to determine whether the triangles are similar. If they are, we want to tell why, and then write our similarity statement. If possible, given the scale factor. Scale factor is only going to be possible if we're given side lengths to compare. Well, in number 9, remember every time you have 2 out of 3 angles in a triangle, we want to find the missing angle by subtracting the 2 given from 180. So 180 minus 48 minus 57 is going to give us a total of 75. And once again, we're going to subtract the two given angles from 180 to find the third angle. So 180 minus 57 minus 75 is going to give us a remaining 48. Now we have 1, 2, and 3 angles in a triangle congruent to three angles in another triangle. So we know that these two triangles are similar by the angle-angle similarity. Now we just need to be careful when we set up our similarity statement because we want to match our corresponding congruent angles. So the first letter in our similarity statement is angle J. Angle J has a measure of 48 degrees, so it needs to be in the same position as Q. Then we, get, we are given angle L. Angle L is 57 degrees, 
So it needs to go in the same position as M. And angle K is the last letter. It has this me measure of 75 degrees, so it needs to be in the same position as P. Okay, number 10. We are going to have similar triangles, hopefully, by the side-side-side similarity. But we can't just write side-side-side similarity without first checking to make sure all of our sides are proportionate. So first thing I do is in each triangle, I label small, medium, and large. So that when I go to set up my proportions, I'm setting up small to small, medium to medium, and large to large. So 8 will be small, 12 will be in the middle, and 16 is large in this triangle. 6 is small, 9 is in the middle, and 12 will be large in triangle PQM. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my proportions. I'm going to do small over small, so 8 over 6. See if that equals question mark. I'm asking myself the question. Does that equal medium to medium? So 12 to 9. And does that equal, question mark, large over large? So 16 over 12. Well, I'm going to reduce each of these fractions. 8 divided by 6, math, enter, enter, is going to give us 4 thirds. 12 divided by 9, math, enter, enter, is going to give us 4 thirds. And 16 divided by 12, math, enter, enter, is going to give us 4 thirds. So, yes, these are similar triangles by side, side, side similarity. The similarity statement, watch the first set. It says triangle JLK. So J to L to K goes medium to small. J to L to K, medium to small. So to repeat that same pattern in the second triangle, I have to go medium to small, Q, M, P. Now my scale factor, well that's this number, the reduced ratio of my corresponding sides. That's my scale factor. Okay, and finally number 18. It says the ratio of the measures of three angles in a triangle is 5 to 7 to 8. So that means that they had a triangle and they were given some number 5 multiplied by some number, 7 multiplied by some number, and 8 multiplied by some number. That some number is called the greatest common factor. When they reduced the ratio 5 over 7 over 8, they pulled out some number, some greatest common factor, and just reduced the extended ratio. So we're trying to find what that sum number is or what that greatest common factor is. So we're just going to do that by calling it x, the missing number. So we know that the sum of the three angles of a triangle, 5x, 7x, and 8x, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So 5x plus 7x plus 8x will equal 180. Combining my like terms, 5, 7, and 8 gives me 20x, and that equals 180. Dividing both sides by 20, I get x equals 9. Now, they want to know the measures of each angle. So we are going to take that 9, our greatest common factor, and substitute it back in to each of the ratios greatest common factor times that number. So 5 times 9 is 45, 7 times 9 is 63, and 8 times 9 is 72. So these measures, 45, 63, and 72, represent the interior angles of a triangle.